I want you to turn with me to a very interesting verse that is very near and dear to my heart. Martin, don't put it up immediately. I first want people to hear it and then you can put it up. It says in 1 John 5 verse 21, you can turn to 1 John 5 verse 21 in the New King James Version. It says, Dear children, keep away from idols. Amen. Some of you get it. Some of you are younger, have no idea why that's funny. Dear children, keep away from idols. Amen. One of the first times I shared my testimony after winning idols, I would use this scripture a lot. But it's also a short summary of the whole Bible and a confirmation of what our main message is about today, which is the first commandment. You remember this our series called First, and today we're talking about the First Commandment. For the next few minutes, it may sound like I'm talking about myself a lot. That is because that's exactly what it's going to be. <laughs> so I'm preparing you now. But I'm going to try my utmost to not make it about me, but, but, but a testimony of what God has done through my life. Okay. So I want to ask you a question, those of you who are a bit older and know what I'm talking about. So for the, for the younger kids, there was the show, it's still running, but it's on a different channel now. It's, it, it's called South African Idols. It's like The Voice. So you will know The Voice maybe. It's like The Voice. I did the first one. Okay. So with that in mind, don't you think it's extremely ironic, humorous, and clever of God to make me the guy who came first in the first South African Idols competition. I came first, remember our series, first, okay? We're talking about the first commandment. I came first in the first South African Idols competition. This year, it's 20 years ago. Yes, feel old. June this year is the anniversary. No one can deny or take away that that happened. No one can take it away from me. It is a fact. It happened. And it can't be undone. I will always be known as the guy who won the first South African Idols and came first. Well, came first in the first South African Idols. Why am I telling you this and repeating myself? Let's establish what is an idol. Originally, especially in biblical terms... An idol was a physically man-made god that people made with their hands, and it normally symbolized something in nature that they could see. And they would pray to it, thinking that this mute, dead thing has power. In recent decades, the world idol became syn- the word, sorry, the word idol became synonymous with rock and pop stars, and it's actually quite an applicable word. Because people called fans, the word fans come from the word fanatical, which is a synonym of crazy. Okay? Would these fans literally worship these artists and treat them as if they are gods with powers from another world? Have you ever seen an Elvis concert where the girls faint when they are at the show? Have you ever seen a Michael Jackson concert? where the girls faint. I haven't been to a One Direction show, but I'm sure it was similar when they were the it thing. And now you've got new guys. Ed Sheeran, I don't know if girls faint in front of him, but I'm sure they worship him in a way. So, because the music industry has kind of claimed this term idol, you know, a music idol, a pop idol, a rock idol, the focus of the show... South African Idol and all the other Idol shows, is called Idols. Why? Because they want to discover yet another singer that fans, fanatical people, can idolize, look up to, worship. They're looking for another idol. That's the point of the show. And let me tell you, I struggled with this when I felt the nudge, the the tug at my heart to enter the show. 
It wasn't an easy decision. Apart from the fact that I was heading into my LLB years of university after, you know, not, what said in Afrikaans? It was near, I'll say it's a loopbaan, not a rainbaan. So I had my three years and four years done. And then I went into my LLB years. I felt uneasy about calling myself a Christian because I, was a, I became a Christian at 16. So I was, as a student, already a born-again Christian. Uh, and I was leading worship at the local church. And I, I felt uneasy about calling myself a Christian and being a worship leader. And now I'm entering a show literally called Idols. It, it, was, it didn't sit well with me. And I had opinions and people around me who said all kinds of stuff. But I had a prophetic word from God that I received three months before hearing even about this thing called idols. And I had an experience performing in December before the January of hearing about it where I knew that I knew for the first time that I need to make music for a living. And the prophetic word and that decision and the reminder that God gave me as I was thinking about whether I should enter or not was what made me enter. And I said to God, I'm going to stand in the queue and I'm going to audition. If it's your will, let me go further. Amen. Never in a million years that I think I would win. But I truly believe that God led me to enter a show called The Thing That He Hates Most. Because the Bible teaches us that what is wisdom to the world is foolishness to God. Amen. And what is foolishness to God is wisdom to the world. Yes. The Bible also teaches us that the first will be last and the last shall be first. And that the laborer who works one hour will get the same reward as the laborer who works the whole day. Our God's ways are higher than our ways and His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. It is an upside down kingdom from the world. We cannot expect and think that we figure Him out ever. If I had followed the opinions of certain well-meaning Christians and bowed to man's understanding of this specific situation, I would not have entered. But since I became a born-again Christian, the one thing I learned early on was to move when God says move. Amen. Obedience is greater than sacrifice, is what the Bible teaches us. And it was sacrificial to enter the show. I was giving up my studies and my career as a lawyer. <laughs> I gave, up, I gave up privacy and I gave up anonymity. You don't realize how much that means until you don't have it anymore. I opened myself up to the court of public opinion and to the jaws of the music industry and the clutches of the dreaded media. But of course, it wasn't all bad. There were some perks. I got to do what I loved, what was my passion. I got a record deal. And I got to make music for a living. And yes, sometimes I got VIP access and some stuff were given to me for free. But all of that stuff does come at some kind of a price. And you only realize it when you are in that game. Okay, but back to the why. Why did God lead me to do this thing that doesn't make Christianese sense? I believe God wanted one of his sons to step into the role that the world meant for idolatry to usher in his presence and kingdom influence through that platform. I believe that by making one of his sons the first winner of the first idols competition, he put a stake in the ground that had a domino effect on the seasons after that in the spiritual realm. How so? Because I'm the first winner of the first idols competition and I put God first. Amen. Therefore, He is first. Amen. I don't think you get it. I need to read that again. Do you get it? Yes. He put me in the first position because I put Him first. And because I put Him first in my life as the one that is first, He is now first. Can you see it? And that has an effect on the whole series. Every series after that is filled with the presence of God. Because He put one of His sons at the first. Who put Him first? Who doesn't get it? Because I can explain it again. This is huge. Because this is a principle that all of us can apply to our lives. 
Whatever position you have in life, whatever sphere of influence you have in life, whatever job description you have in life, you are there first. But who are you putting first? Yourself? Your own interests? Or are you putting God first? Did I live a perfect holy life from the get-go after idols? Regrettably, no. I made a lot of mistakes. I did a lot of sin. And I'm sorry about that. And I've dealt with that in my life. But luckily, by God's grace, His plan for my life is greater than my baggage, issues, and sins. And His redemption and reconciliation and grace was greater than all the mess-ups I could have made. But I needed to stay close to His heart. I needed to always come back to Him. Many times I was a prodigal son who had to return home. And one of my biggest lessons was to learn that I am a son, not an orphan in His house. Today, 20 years later, I stand before you as your pastor. Leading a church. Who would have thunk? Definitely not me. Did any of you see me becoming a pastor 20 years ago when I sang in those weird little outfits they gave me? Anyway, there we go. I want to give you one example of, I have many, but this one stands out for me personally, of how God has used the platform that He has given me. The same way that He's given each and every one of us a place of influence. Just because my place of influence was in the so-called limelight or spotlight doesn't mean it's more important than your place, wherever God has placed you. You need to know that. And you need to know that wherever God has placed you, if you are faithful and you've been called to that place, you can make a difference for the kingdom. Here is one testimony that I'd like to share with you. In December 2019, I was invited to perform at a Christmas carols event at a church just outside of Durban. I was part of this Christmas carols event and the first time we did it, the head pastor shared the gospel in between the two sets. Then after we did the first one, he asked me if I would do the altar call, preach the gospel and do an altar call in the second uh, concert. And I had the opportunity to do that. I don't know if you've ever shared the gospel in just five minutes. It's, it's quite a challenge, but God led me and it was it, was, it felt powerful. And then afterwards, I got an email from the pastor. And he said to me, an old lady of 70 years old who has never been to church in her whole life. She had an experience in some Catholic church that, that just put her off church for the rest of her life. She never wanted to go to any kind of church ever. She came to this carols event because I was there. Now, once again, it's not about me. I want you to see how God worked through my life to reach this lady. She came to a church for the first time in her life of 70 years because I was singing and she voted for me on idols. She came to church. She heard the gospel five-minute message. She gave her life to Christ. That makes everything worth it. Everything. That is what our lives should be about. How many souls... How many souls can each of us bring into the kingdom if we would just put God first? You have no idea how we can use the platform that you have in your life. Give Him a chance. Be faithful. You will never know. There's a soul in heaven because I, I made a decision to do a show called Idols. How many more were there? And I know Apart from that, I've been to many other churches. I've done many other events where many hands went up. But that one stands out for me and I wanted to share that with you today.